All right. Um, looks like the best way to digest your lunch is a bit of troubleshooting and a bit of monitoring, right? <laughs> uh, my name is Loris De Giovanni. I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Sysdig. Um, I've been involved in open source and monitoring for many years, in particular uh, in my previous uh, career, I was one of the people behind a couple of popular open source projects. Uh, one is WinPickup and the other one is Wireshark. And now I am the creator of the SysDig open source project. And this is the first time I present near a wooden horse. Uh, actually, two of them, and they both look better than me. So, uh, all right. Uh, Rocket is great. Um, we uh, all love it. In particular, SSD, we included uh, official uh, support for Rocket uh, around uh, the time when Rocket 1.0 was launched. Uh, there are uh, several. Uh, interesting features uh, that are unique in Rocket, like uh, uh, simple approach, uh, pluggable isolation, uh, native support for, for pods. These, these are just you know, examples. Uh, but what I want to do in this presentation is uh, focus a bit on uh, uh, visibility and troubleshooting for Rocket and for Kubernetes and Tectonic. So uh, Kubernetes is uh, absolutely fantastic too. Uh, I'm really in love with this technology. Uh, it's solid, it has great APIs, uh, it's a pleasure to work with, uh, uh, easy to deploy, and thanks to Tectonic, it's also enterprise ready. So um, the uh, question is, how do we monitor them? Uh, and in particular, uh, how do we get uh, introspection that is uh, transparent to deploy, horizontal, orchestration aware, rich, deep, application focus? So these are all questions that uh, typically come to your mind, especially when you're starting using uh, new technologies that uh, promise to solve many problems like, uh, like uh, Rocket and Kubernetes and, and, and Tectonic. And monitoring, monitoring is important, but very often people don't focus on troubleshooting, which tends to be particularly challenging in, in orchestrated uh, infrastructures because uh, uh, collecting metrics and charting them, OK, uh, uh, it's something that sort of we know how to do that. But uh, uh, actually digging to the, and going to the next level in contain, container-based infrastructures uh, is not trivial. It's not trivial because uh, the tools are still not there. So SysDig is one of the tools that we've developed uh, with this in mind. What is um, SysDig? It's a tool uh, to capture system events, filter them, and run useful scripts on top of uh, these events. Uh, I often compare it to S-Trace uh, plus TCP dump uh, plus LSOF plus HTOP plus Lua, which typically when I do people are even more confused. Um, but uh, uh, I'm planning to spend quite a bit of time on the tool uh, during these 30 minutes, so hopefully uh, I can, uh, it, it will uh, become more clear as we use it and as I show you uh, what, it, what it does and how it works. SysDig is open source. It's available on GitHub. I have a link at the end of my presentation. Uh, it's uh, included in most uh, of the um, uh, main uh, Linux distributions. So if you're using Debian or Ubuntu and so on, you just do an apt get install sysdig and you, and you have it in your, in your system. We also have uh, uh, an uh, Curses command line UI for sysdig that I'm going to show you later as well. When we created SysDig, we had some goals. Uh, the first one was uh, for it to be production ready, so in particular, simple and lightweight. There are some uh, other tools that are based on, let's say, similar concept of being able to extract uh, system information and system calls uh, and essentially get insights from them. But uh, uh, that kind of data tends to be uh, hard to extract and uh, uh, hard to process. So with SysDig, we wanted to bring something that was usable uh, immediately and pretty simple. Uh, very rich data set, uh, offering instant value and offering a natural workflow. In addition to that, um, we have native support for uh, Docker and Rocket. So um, it is, there's full awareness in the tool for uh, containers and also for what's running inside containers. And uh, uh, we also implemented full integration with uh, uh, Kubernetes and therefore 
with Tectonic uh, by essentially integrating with the, with, uh, the Kubernetes API. Um, a couple of uh, architectural slides. By the way, uh, how many of you have already uh, heard or used uh, uh, SysDig? Just so I can tune my presentation. Okay, a third, a third of you. Okay, a bit uh, uh, on the SysDig uh, uh, architecture. So here in this machine, I have uh, uh, a kernel with uh, um, a couple of applications running on top of these operating systems, and uh, a couple of containers running on different uh, container runtimes. What happens is uh, uh, SysDig instruments the uh, operating system kernel with a, a, a kernel module. This kernel module is able to uh, capture the information that these, uh, both the applications and the containers are exchanging with the operating system. In particular, we uh, instrument the trace, point, uh, trace points related with uh, uh, system calls, enter and exit, uh, and uh, signal delivery and uh, thread spawning and this kind of stuff so that we have essentially a nice stream of events, very granular that are generating by uh, the entities, both containers and applications that are running in, in this uh, uh, operating system. This data is, is captured uh, by the SysDig process that can run on the host or uh, inside uh, the SysDig container which is on the Docker Hub. So the benefit here is you don't need to instrument every single container to get the kind of visibility that I will show you during, during the presentation. And then the, this data is collected. And a bit of, similarly to what you can do with uh, tools like TCP dump or Wireshark, uh, this data can be uh, displayed in real time on the screen or uh, it can be captured and saved to trace files, and then you can analyze the trace files. Again, similarly to what you would do with a tool like TCP Dump or Wireshark. Um, these slides contains uh, a partial list of uh, things that you can uh, do with uh, SysDig. So it's a quite flexible uh, tool that uh, um, uh, makes it possible to do a few different things. Uh, but yeah, in instead of just talking about uh, uh, the items in this list, why don't we just uh, switch to the console and we take a look. First of all, can you guys read this? Okay. Um, all right. First thing that I can do with SysDig is that I can just run it without any kind of command line argument. And, and as you can see, I get a stream of things that are uh, printed in the screen. When, it, when it's launched without any kind of command line arguments, SysDig looks a lot like uh, a tool like uh, S-Trace, for example. So I see a very verbose stream of all of the events that are happening inside, uh, inside my operating system. And that's the end of the demo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, as you can probably tell, this is, uh, I mean, deep and rich, but uh, typically not very useful. So we put a sort of layer, a set of layers on top of this. Uh, one of them, for example, is uh, uh, the uh, ability to uh, express filters with a syntax that, that is very similar to the Wireshark uh, uh, capture syntax. So I can do something like uh, event.type equal open. And now, as you can see, I have much less stuff, and I'm seeing only the open events that uh, are happening in the system. This is all state-based, so I can also do filters based on, uh, for example, file names, uh, connection ports, and that kind of stuff. Another important thing is uh, I can uh, um, read a pod. I can save my events to file, and then, and then I can read them. So now I'm seeing a similar stream, but I'm actually capturing these events uh, from, uh, uh, reading these events from a file that has, that, that has been captured before, and I can even export the file to a different machine, and I still have the full functionality. Now, um, let's put this in practice uh, to take a look uh, at a couple of things that you can do with Rocket and only with Rocket, and how they work. 
In particular, one thing that I experimented during the weekend that I find very interesting about Rocket is the so-called fly, uh, fly mode, so the fly stage one, which, as this slide says, it's uh, an alternative stage one that runs a single application in uh, CH root isolation. So instead of having you know, the full chain of uh, C groups uh, and system D uh, to run the application in your container, you just have, uh, you know, your container is isolated just with C C CH root, but then it gets essentially, it, it lives in the, in the C groups of the host. And the benefit here is being able to have containers that still benefit from, let's say, the packaging of something like Rocket, but can run in the context of a, most, most, mostly in the, in, in the context of, of the host. There's more information about that at the link that I have uh, here uh, at the bottom of, of my slide. But uh, um, one thing that I'm going to do is uh, um, I took two captures of uh, a container, a rocket container, an Alpine Linux rocket container, um, starting in uh, regular uh, stage one mode and in uh, uh, fly mode. So let's start uh, first with uh, uh, the normal mode. and. Uh, uh, right now, by the way, notice what I'm doing. I'm running sysdig with uh, a chisel. Chisels are Lua scripts that uh, you can put on top of sysdig to process the events on the, on the sysdig stream to do uh, something that is useful. This one is called spy users. Essentially, it captures specific system calls that are connected to spawning processes and captures some state related to system calls and then shows essentially a stream of what's been executed in a system, in particular, what's being executed inside this container as the container starts. So let's run it. And we can see at the beginning, it's uh, uh, more like a rocket starting. And uh, uh, I can see um, uh, a bit of uh, 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 configuration at the beginning. Then I see the rocket run, some modules that are loaded. Then I see the stage one in it. So this is rockets. Rocket has two stages in loading. This is stage one. And then I see a bunch of stuff that has to do with uh, configuring the network for the new container. And then stage two starts. And in particular, I see here that uh, system D and spawn is, uh, is started. So this is essentially the beginning of the life of the container. And then uh, after that, I see slash bin slash, slash sh, we're inside the Pine Linux at this point, and this is me executing ls inside the container. So the container is up and running, and this is the first command that has been executed in the container. Okay, let's take a look at fly mode, much shorter, right? Uh, the beginning is the same, in particular, uh, uh, rocket starts, stage one starts, but this time there's uh, uh, a bit of uh, kernel module loading for uh, uh, overlay. But then, as you can see, um, no uh, systemd at all. We immediately go essentially into running the shell, uh, running, the, running the SH, and run, running uh, LS. So uh, we uh, are essentially in a much simpler mode, uh, which is uh, available uh, only uh, in Rocket containers. This is something that, for example, you cannot do with, uh, with Docker. In this container, we'll have, uh, uh, mm, other than being uh, 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 jailed in, in a CH root uh, environment, otherwise it will live in the, in the namespace uh, of, the, of the parent container. Um, let's take a look at another thing that is specific uh, for Rocket, which is, uh, uh, pods with uh, multiple containers. So Docker typically has one application per container, while Rocket gives you the option of running more than one thing inside the same container. In order to do that, I'm going to jump into sysdig. So sysdig is a curses user interface. Uh, some of you, uh, if you use Linux uh, 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 on a regular basis, you might recognize similarities with uh, the look and feel of uh, something like uh, HTOP. Uh, it's done on purpose. Uh, I am personally a big, big H top fa fan, so I use it all the day. Uh, all day. And uh, when creating these, uh, uh, we try to have uh, an interface that is as nice as the H top one, and, and even just the keystrokes. So if you if you're used to H top, you, you should look fa uh, should look fa familiar. In particular, this is like the entry, the basic view of CCSDIG, and I'm seeing a process list very similarly to what I would see inside uh, top or H top. There are a couple of differences here. 
the first one is uh, CCSDIG is, uh, uh, has the concept of views. So I can click on F2 or on views here at the bottom of the screen. And uh, I have uh, a bunch of things that I can see for uh, uh, this machine. I'm going to move to the top and switch to containers. And now I have the list of containers running in this machine. Again, I'm working on a capture file here. So uh, I'm looking at the system around the time when I did this troubleshooting. It's actually on a separate machine that was living in AWS. But I'm using the trace file here on my local virtual machine. I can see the containers. I can see how much CPU they're using. Uh, I can see how, much pr how many processes uh, and threads they have. I can see um, uh, um, the amount of memory that, that they're using, the, the amount of file I/O, and so on. In particular, if I scroll to the bottom, there's an interesting thing. There are two containers here uh, that have uh, the same ID, Mongo and MongoStSD. This is essentially rocket, rocket running to, to these two containers inside the same environment. So inside Sysdig, if I go inside the first one, I can see now the filter that Sysdig is, is using to show me the data for this container. And as you, as you can see, it's a filter on the container ID, and then a, a column Mongo, which is essentially the name of the application inside, inside this container. Uh, container ID starts with C and four E's and ends with uh, D9. So, if I go to uh, the other container, MongoStSD, the ID is, is exactly the same. They're running together. They're running inside the same environment. Uh, but the uh, application name at the bottom is, uh, is different. So uh, this kind of uh, uh, awareness is uh, 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 not only C-group and namespace aware, but it's also aware of the specifics of the runtime, like in this case, uh, the specifics of, of Rocket. By the way, as you can see, uh, this is another thing that is different from uh, uh, stuff like uh, uh, HTOP or TOP. I can drill down inside, inside things. So inside CCSD, when I make a selection, uh, and let's go back to the Mongo, to the Mongo container, uh, I can click inside. And now I'm essentially in the context of the Mongo container. And I'm seeing, for example, the process that is running here, and I can keep going, for example, and I click on the process, and I see the threads, you know, that MongoDB uh, has spawned, and I can see the res resource utilization for the specific threads. So the ability to go essentially top down from uh, the machine into the details of a specific container by just clicking Enter and clicking Backspace to go back and then and maybe investigate something else. All right. Um, this is great. Uh, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of benefit because uh, there's quite a bit of uh, troubleshooting that you can do without even having to install anything inside the container. So uh, the container here, including the Mongo container, are totally clean. And CSD can access this information from the outside. On the other hand, we have another layer. We have the orchestration layer, right? Kubernetes, Tectonic, what they do essentially is uh, they take containers and they allocate them uh, in uh, the best possible way uh, across uh, a cluster of uh, physical or virtual machines based on criteria that you define when you create your services. Um, here in this slide, we have a very artistic uh, and sophisticated depiction of a traditional three-tier application. So in this case, uh, for example, cache, web server, and database. Very good at doing artistic slides. Uh, but nowadays, the world is more something like this, right? So uh, the gray boxes here are physical uh, machines, for example. And the uh, color boxes are containers. And you can have you know, maybe three different services in this case. And the containers implementing these services uh, can run on arbitrary machines, not only, but they typically can move pretty quickly uh, across machines. Uh, this is something that the core OS tech does, does very well and very effectively. The problem is, uh, uh, at this point, uh, two things. One is, uh, how do you get data out of these guys? And I'm not only talking about what's the CPU of a specific container, but what's running inside it. What, is, uh, uh, what are the system metrics, the network uh, metrics, process information, Java, JVM if I'm running Java, requests, errors. So I, how do I get this information? Problem number one. And problem number two is, uh, um, 
how do I correlate this information so that the blue guys, which are a service, are reported as a consistent entity? Because getting the, uh, this information for a specific container is not very useful. So let's go to the console again, and we can stay inside this, uh, this trace file. But this time, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to look at this. Uh, uh, I'm going to start the, the um, uh, namespaces view. So what happens here is I took a capture on this machine. This capture contains all of the information for this machine. This, as I was taking this capture, sysdig has a comma line argument to be able to connect to the Kubernetes master to start pulling information. It pulls information about metadata of the containers that are running inside the machine so that I have a list of containers, but I, it's not only like container IDs and container images, but it's actually uh, namespaces, pods, uh, replication controllers, and so on. So for example, here, I have like six or seven containers running on this machine. Uh, I can see that I have three namespaces. I can, for example, drill down inside uh, the production one. And uh, uh, I can see now the pods for this uh, uh, environment. And I can see a Java application pod and the Mongo pod. Let's uh, drill down into the Java one. And now uh, I can see uh, my, my Java application running inside this pod. But once I'm inside the specific container that I was able to identify through, through the metadata, I can uh, switch to a different view, for example, connections. And this gives me the network connection for that specific container inside this uh, development namespace. And uh, I can see that I have a bit of uh, custom ports. I have a couple of uh, HTTP connections. And I, I have a Redis connection. Let's, for example, go to the Redis one. And let's keep drilling down. Uh, CCSDIG is a functionality uh, called the uh, ECO. ECO takes all of the different uh, buffers that have been transferred, in this case, on the network, and allows me to visualize them. I uh, do F5. And these are my Redis uh, uh, buffer exchanges for this specific container. I can switch to printable ASCII. And these are, are actually you know, the Redis requests and, and Redis responses that this container is doing. Again, this is done by capturing the, the Redis data on the network under the hood and, uh, and then uh, presenting it uh, 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 on the screen by filtering essentially this data based on the, on the drill down that, that I've done. Um, I can go even deeper. And still, for this specific connection, what I can do is I can do dig. And dig is a bit like a trace, but for the specific selection that I've made, so in this case, a connection. And I can see that really granular data, including nanosecond timestamps and the process that is done in the PID uh, and, the, and the system calls, for just for this specific connection related to the development uh, uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes namespace. OK? So uh, the idea is. Uh, being able to leverage uh, the context offered by Kubernetes and Tectonic to uh, offer a drill down based uh, approach uh, that goes from, let's say, the namespace to the single system calls for a specific connection, again, without uh, requiring any kind of instrumentation of any of the containers uh, running on the machine. OK, um, another five minutes. Uh, what I want to show is uh, the distributed version of these. So very similarly, what we uh, have here is uh, our uh, distributed tool uh, called SysD Cloud. Uh, the same information here is captured, but instead of being uh, 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 dumped into local trace files that then, that then I can analyze uh, with the command line tools, it's piped to a backend and it's correlated so that I can get a multi-container, multi-machine, multi-cluster view of uh, uh, the uh, of my services, and here in particular, uh, what I'm seeing is uh, a four machine Kubernetes cluster that is actually running Tectonic, and it's running um, Rocket containers on Tectonic. So this is a deployment with Rocket uh, running uh, on top of uh, uh, Tectonic, and uh, I can. Uh, uh, see my rocket containers here. I can see, for example, the same Mongo container that I was seeing before from the command line. So what I can do is I can uh, click on it, and uh, um, uh, this time I can you know, drill down and see, for example, the CPU for this container, uh, but also um, specific uh, MongoDB information. For example, if I type Mongo here, 
under views. Um, I can see number of requests, but also collections, uh, uh, the, the type of request, the number of errors, the number of operations, and so on. This works in a similar way. So there's uh, a CSD container running inside each single machine in this cluster. And uh, this uh, instance of CSD gets awareness of a rocket and is able to introspect in, uh, rocket containers. One of these rocket containers is running Mongo and it's generating, uh, it's serving traffic. We decode this traffic and we're able to show on the screen essentially these uh, uh, Mongo statistics. This is useful, but again, orchestration awareness tends to make it much more useful. Uh, so I can switch to something like uh, a Kubernetes view here, and I'm seeing the same four machines, but this time uh, the physical layer is removed, and what we're seeing is uh, uh, the namespace, uh, the replication controller, uh, and then the pod, and then the container. So I can see my dev environment and my production environment. And no matter where the containers are, even if they're on different machines, if they are in the, dev in the production environment, they are aggregated here. And I can see uh, the replication controllers, a Cassandra one, a Java application, client, and so on. And I can, for example, you know, get the Cassandra um, service here and uh, uh, look at the statistics. Uh, let's pick a Cassandra view this time. Mongo is not very relevant here. And this time, even if there are multiple containers implementing Cassandra, these metrics are essentially created by aggregating the data from these containers and correlating them together. Uh, the advantage of doing this uh, for, uh, for monitoring and troubleshooting purposes is even more clear when you look at the topology. So uh, here we're looking at the physical map uh, for uh, these, uh, this cluster. So uh, the same four machines that are talking to each other. And this is uh, like a, a dependency map that is created automatically by looking at the traffic uh, that, these, uh, that the containers are, are and the machines are generating. And I can uh, zoom in inside uh, one of these machines and I can start seeing the rocket containers here, you know? So this is actually, and I can even open them, you know, and see, and see what's inside. So in, in this one specifically, there's, there's Mongo running. So this is great. but. Again, physical topologies in modern microservice environments are not very clear, you know? It's a bit, uh, I compare it uh, a bit to the orchestration, orchestrated version of this, right? Uh, everything is connected to everything, and uh, you can really trace. I mean, if, if you follow the cables, you can, you, maybe you can go to, to the exact point, but it's not really easy uh, and trivial. Well, if, on the other hand, we apply the same concept, so we fetch the Kubernetes API, we remove the physical host, and we show how uh, namespaces, uh, replication controllers, uh, services, pods, and containers talk to each other, now essentially we can see you know, the, the different environments. Let's do the uh, dev again. And if we zoom into it, you can see it's, it's very clear. We have a Java application here. We see the client. We see that it's talking to Cassandra, Mongo, Redis, and so on. And then as we zoom, we can see the details of the specific containers. But now at any level, the um, uh, whole uh, representation is much more clear. So um, of course, uh, this is uh, only uh, scratching the surface, but uh, um, I hope it gives you, you know, a, an idea and some inspiration, especially if you're moving to this new cool way of doing things. And if you have questions, of course, feel free to uh, come uh, and talk to me. We also have a little booth in the other room. And these are pointers uh, where you can go and download uh, all of this goodness or get more information. Thank you very much. <laughs>